<laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, come and have your way. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. And do what only you can do, Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. There's no place that we would rather be than here in your presence, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Father. Hallelujah. You're so good, Lord. You're so good. There's no place we'd rather be on a Wednesday night than here, Lord, in your presence with the best family in the world, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You're so good. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it's okay to laugh. <laughs> oh, the joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Your presence is better than life, better than anything in this life. And we love you, Lord. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm really excited. <laughs> Really excited um, to have the opportunity to minister tonight. Thank you, Pastor Jason. <laughs> um, the Lord is good. Amen? He's so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> just keep drinking. Just keep laughing. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have notes, but they're like a little blurry. Okay. Okay. Oh, make the font bigger. Okay. Hallelujah. So Jesus is our bread that came down from heaven. Amen. John 6.35 in the Amplified Classic says, Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry, and he who believes and cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me will never thirst any more at any time. John 6.27 says, Why would you strive for food that is perishable? and not be passionate to seek the food of eternal life, which never spoils. The Son of Man is ready to give you what matters most. For God the Father has destined me for this purpose. They replied, So what should we do if we want to do God's work? Jesus answered, The work you can do for God starts with believing in the one he sent. They replied, Show us a miracle so that we can see it. And when... And then we'll believe in you. Moses took care of our ancestors who were fed by the miracle of manna every day in the desert. Just like the scripture says, he fed them with the bread from heaven. What sign will you perform for us? The truth is, Jesus said, Moses didn't give you the bread of heaven. It's my father who offers the bread that comes as a dramatic sign from heaven. The bread of God is the one who came, down, came out of heaven to give his life to feed the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 6, 47. I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, he who believes in me, <laughs> who adheres to, trusts in, relies on, and has faith in me, has, now possesses, eternal life. I am the bread of life that gives life, the living bread. Your forefathers ate the manna in the wilderness. Did I just read this? Oh, okay. <laughs> and yet they died. But this is the bread that comes down from heaven so that anyone may eat of it and never die. 
I myself am this living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Then he answered and said, Matthew 4, 4, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew 6, 11, give us this day our daily bread. And Acts 14, 17, nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness. In that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Hallelujah. That's good. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. (laughs) So the Father doesn't just want us to serve him, but to eat him. He came that we may eat of him. He presented himself as a life, as life in the form of food. The Father's intention is that man would feed upon him. Okay, go with me to John 6. Everything's a song. (laughs) All right, verse one. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the lake of Tiberias, which is also known as Lake Galilee, and a massive crowd of people followed him everywhere. They were attracted by his miracles and the healings. They watched him perform. Jesus went up the slope of a hill and sat down with his disciples. Now it was approaching the time of the Jewish celebration of Passover, and there were many pilgrims on the way to Jerusalem in the crowd. As Jesus sat down, he looked and saw the massive crowd of people scrambling up the hill, for they wanted to be near him. So he turned to Philip and said, Where will we buy enough food to feed all these people? Now Jesus already knew what he was about to do. But he said this to stretch Philip's faith. Philip answered, well, I suppose if we were to give everyone only a snack, it would cost thousands of dollars to buy enough food. But just then, Andrew, Peter's brother, spoke up and said, look, here's a young person with five barley loaves and two small fish. But how far would that go with this huge crowd? Have everyone sit down. Jesus said to his disciples, So on the vast grassy slope, more than 5,000 hungry people sat down. Jesus then took the barley loaves and the fish and gave thanks to God. He then gave it to the disciples to distribute to the people. Miraculously, the food multiplied, with everyone eating as much as they wanted. When everyone was satisfied, Jesus told his disciples, No, go back and gather up the pieces left over so that nothing will be wasted. The disciples filled up 12 baskets of fragments, a basket of leftovers for each disciple. All of the people were astounded as they saw with their own eyes the incredible miracle Jesus had performed. They began to say among themselves, he really is the one, the true prophet we've been expecting. Okay, so looking at verse 5, it says, when Jesus, so when Jesus saw the crowds, the first thing he said was, where can we buy bread so that these may eat? He ordered those that came to him to sit down. Then he distributed to them who was seated. When we come to him, he wants to nourish us. When we go to the Father, he wants to feed us. In order for him to be able to satisfy us with himself, we must first be seated. By that, I don't mean like sitting in a chair, okay? (laughs) I mean, but being rest, stillness, relaxing, you know, um, quiet before him with all other distractions aside, being still. Psalm 4.4, tremble in awe before the Lord and do not sin against him. Be still upon your bed and search your heart before him. Pause in his presence. Psalm 23.2, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. And still waters translates to waters of rest or refreshment. And Father won't chase us down in an attempt to feed us or nourish us with himself. Only those that come to him in an attitude of rest will receive and eat. Okay, I'm going to go to Luke 10. Luke 
Luke 10, verse 38. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their journey, they came to a village where a woman welcomed Jesus into her home. Her name was Martha, and she had a sister named Mary. Mary sat down attentively before the master, absorbing every revelation he shared. But Martha became exasperated by finishing the numerous household chores in preparation for her guests. So she interrupted Jesus and said, Lord, don't you think it's unfair that my sister left me to do all this work by myself? You should tell her to get up and help me. (laughs) The Lord answered her, Martha, my beloved Martha, why are you upset and troubled, pulled away by all these many distractions? Are they really that important? Mary discovered the one thing most important by choosing to sit at my feet. She is undistracted, and I won't take this privilege from her. Ha. So Jesus didn't make Martha stop serving. He wasn't like, hey, I have something important to say. You know, it's a rhema word from the Lord. You're going to want to come. You're going to want to hear this. You know, it's life. It's eternal. Come and listen to what I'm saying. He and at the same time, he just gave his words to Mary because she was in the position to listen. She let all other distractions aside. Because we, there's, always, there's always things going on in this world. You know, there's always distractions. But she chose to lay, these, lay, lay them all aside. She chose to sit at his feet. And I was thinking, what's changed since back then, you know, like distractions? Well, um, we have electricity and phones and pretty media. I mean, there's probably more distractions today than back then, you know. So so Jesus was telling those who have come to him hungry to sit down. And that was an order. You know, and that was tied together with his desire to feed them. He says, rest. He cannot feed those who will not rest. Those who refuse to relinquish all other cares, all other activities, all other efforts, to wait upon him in complete trust, bare naked before him. Many press, work, fight for the father to give them something of himself, but we must recognize his desire to feed us, obey his command, and rest in him. Amen? Then receive his presence, the supernatural bread. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I read this story about a man uh, during his lunch break. Uh, He went and he sat at a table filled with culinary students, and they were studying and sharing recipes from their cookbooks. And as he watched and listened, he perceived that in the midst of their pictures, conversations, books, and opinions, and knowledge of food, not one actually had any food. Many have talk study, books, materials, knowledge of the Father, but are starving on the inside. Okay. If, I found a, if I found a man dying of hunger, I wouldn't be able to save him by giving him recipes or describing food to him. Even the greatest chef in the world would die if he doesn't eat food. Yo. <laughs> and he can't draw an ounce of sustenance from his knowledge, experience, materials, books, or teachings. Huh? Dude, bro. <laughs> John 6, 51. I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the rest of the world. Jesus is the bread that came down from heaven. It's coming down. He's, it's a continual coming down. Okay? And we don't... Just, we don't live just because we ate of him yesterday or at one time. We must live our lives by eating him. To eat means to receive nourishment. To be nourished means to be sustained and supplied for all that is needed for life, health, and growth. Hallelujah. We've been invited to a life of feasting upon Jesus. (laughs) A life of enjoying him as our nourishment. We receive all that's needed for life, health, and growth in him. Say, in him. Yeah. In his presence. It's 
<laughs> it's crucial to receive it daily. It's available, and it's not a pressure thing. He didn't pressure, he didn't pressure Martha, and he's not going to pressure anyone else. He's not going to pressure us. And in his presence, he expands us. He expands us with love, compassion, as we, see, as we receive, and lots more, <laughs> as we receive him into ourselves. He illuminates and he perme- permeates our entire being, causing us to grow in strength and in health. Amen. It's his will. <laughs> he wants us to grow. We're either growing or we're dying. We're either, yeah. <laughs> it's not, there's no in between. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So good, Lord. Acts 17, 28. In him we live and we move and we have our being. (laughs) I have a rap to that verse. Do you guys want to hear it? (laughs) No? No, just kidding. Isaiah. Oh, Isaiah said he wanted to help me with the hand motions. Right? Right? (laughs) Okay, I'll do it. Okay, and you guys can sing along once you get it, okay? (laughs) All right, okay. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Hashtag joy. Okay. (laughs) I don't know if I can do it. (laughs) Okay. In him, I live, I move, I have my being. In him, I live, I move, I have my being. In him, I live, I move, I have my being. What? <laughs> okay. Yo. Okay. That. Okay. <laughs> this is like half my life. Okay. I turned everything into a song. <laughs> if there's a... You <laughs> Okay, if you want to remember something, turn it into a song. I'm just saying. My kids love that rap, so. I mean, (laughs) except I don't know about Isaiah, but, you know, the little ones do. Do you love it? (laughs) Shoot. Well, I'm a hip mom, remember? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, the next time you're reading that verse and you hear my voice, you know, the rap. Okay, anyway. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right without his voice daily we are empty and lifeless we're in need of a father on a daily basis the more time that we spend with him the more we hear his voice directing us and guiding us religion is the lifeless devotion to god wanting to live in a way that pleases god by our own efforts Okay, John 6, 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, then you, ha- then you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is f- food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. So, he who eats my flesh and drinks my my blood abides. So he who eats abides, and he who doesn't eat doesn't abide. So... Without his presence, the letters in here stay on the page. With his presence, they're written in our hearts. Amen. In his presence, he becomes audible, tangible, visible, and edible in our hearts. (laughs) Ha (laughs) ha. That's fun. (laughs) He's the best. You're the best, Father. (laughs) We must learn to enjoy the Father. Philippians 2.13. God is working within you to will and the do of his good pleasure. 
He is one to continually be experienced and interacted with. He must be the satisfaction and empowerment of our lives. If he isn't, we're just stuck in lifeless religion. Our satisfaction must be our present experience with him. Our hunger for him must supersede anything else, anything else in this life. We must yearn to touch him rather than attempt to define him. We must yearn to know his heart rather than to seek to understand him. We must yearn to know him than just perform his works. Amen? The Lord enables us to live radically. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. We were all made to drink of one spirit. So the gospel, which is the good news, that he reconciled us back to himself through his death and resurrection of the cross to enjoy communion and oneness with him, the gospel must be let into every part of our life. Colossians 2, 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. <laughs> Isaiah 44, 3. I will pour out refreshing water on the thirsty streams and on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your children and my blessing upon your descendants. That's TPT. Joel 2.28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. The Father's desire is to fill us with himself. He fills us on the inside and mixes himself with all of our being so that we may live in union with him. He wants to live through us by us living in him. Say, in him? Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost is everything. Without the Holy Spirit, nothing lives. He puts right desires inside us by the Holy Ghost. His desires become our desires, and then our desires become his desires. It's a transformation on the inside. It's like this mesh. Thing. I don't know, Pastor Shane explained it one time during a humility class, and I was like, yeah, that's good. It's like it's this, this oneness. We're one with him. It's good. He's good. Hallelujah. Um, being intimate with the Holy Ghost causes us to walk in his own ways. Only receiving his spirit can transform desires of the old nature. Otherwise, men search inside themselves for a strength that they don't operate in and a nature that they don't possess and strive for outward conformity to godliness that always leads to a frustrating dead end. Hashtag religion. <laughs> but our new nature is the presence of God. <laughs> Hashtag stay drunk. <laughs> Good Lord. Ha! You're so good. <laughs> Our new nature, say new nature, is the presence of God in our very being, strengthening us with life we've never had before and transforming our inside every single day. Yo, woo! <laughs> Experiencing him is not an option. It's life or death, life and death. If we are to have any authentic relationship with the Father, experience is crucial. I can't take experience out of my relationship with the Father any more than I can reduce my marriage down to a picture. My marriage is an experience. Sound, touch, voice, presence, work, joy, and much more. If I take experience out of my relationship with the Father, then all I have left is an idea. We cannot be content to experience the Father just in public on Sundays and maybe like the occasional Wednesdays. There's dreams that he wants to reveal and birth on the inside of us. Psalm 25, 14 in TPT is really good. There's a private place. <laughs> Found this version, I'm like, oh, this is really good. <laughs> There's a private place reserved for the lovers of God. 
where they sit near him and receive revelation secrets of his promises. And so conception only happens in the private place. There are certain things that I will only do with my husband when we're alone. So it is with the father. There are certain things that he will only perform when the door is shut and our hearts are fixed on him fully. Huh? Some wonder why they're not pregnant with God's purposes or why they can't give birth to dreams that, from his heart or why they can't see the fruit of the Spirit consistently in their lives. Just as a pregnant woman cannot hide the fact that she's been with a man, union with Father cannot be hidden. <laughs> no one. <laughs> <laughs> no one can reflect a light brighter than what they've actually seen themselves. Okay, Proverbs 4:18. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you, Lord. Psalms and Proverbs. Thank you, Lord. but the lovers of God walk on the highway of light and their way shines brighter and brighter until they bring forth the perfect day all right we must experience him ourselves I think the version that I was looking for is the path of the just grow brighter and brighter till the perfect day amen that's us. We're the just. No one gets pregnant by reading what to expect while expecting. <laughs> or by telling themselves they're pregnant or desiring a child. Desire alone will never create union or the miracle that results from that union. Having children is not the purpose of intimacy, but the result of intimacy. Father is intimate with us because he loves us. Not that we would produce offspring, but the result of Im intimacy it will be productivity, inevitably. Luke 19.13. I keep forgetting this is just a New Testament only. <laughs> Okay, actually, I don't know why I had that in there. Never mind on that one. <laughs> <laughs> we don't simply become fruitful because we have a desire to. Okay? No one becomes pregnant by commitment alone. Otherwise, I would have got pregnant, pregnant the moment that I said I do to Pablo. That would be weird. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Commitment is just the beginning. <laughs> Commitment is just the beginning. We must we must settle in our hearts that all other loves must be refused. God won't pour out his spirit to one who is not fully his. We must give ourselves fully to experience in him every single day. No one can become pregnant by knowing the methods in which to do so. Just because we teach about prayer and can prophesy and perform signs and miracles and teach it, preach it, whatever, it doesn't mean that we're living it. Experiential union comes from experience alone. Oh, hallelujah. Father, <laughs> help us to come to a deeper awareness of you, Lord, in our daily life. Help us, Lord, if we want to see you more clearly, Father. So there's no substitute. Experiencing him is abundant life. John 17, 3. This is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. 
Hallelujah. Eternal life now. Eternal life starts now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good news. That's life. It's producing something. He's producing something inside of us new every single day. His mercies are new every single day. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> if we want to have what Jesus had, we've got to do what Jesus did. Jesus often went away and talked to the Father. Luke 5, 16, so he himself often withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. Jesus started out his earthly ministry with 40 days of withdrawing to the wilderness to fast and pray in solitude and silence. This empowered him to resist the enemy and prepared him for his public ministry. Continually, Jesus withdrew from people, daily life activities, and the demands of his ministry to be alone with the Father. No matter how busy we think we are, we're not busier than Jesus was. Yo. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Jesus constantly had people pulling on him, sick people asking him for help. He was constantly discipling the disciples. Is that, it? Is that a thing? Discipling the disciples? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> with his life and with his teaching. There was all kinds of drama going on around him. All the time. I mean, not because of him, but you, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> he stopped the drama. He ended, yeah. Anyways, no drama in his presence. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> and he was the first one to get up in the morning, the last one to go to bed, spending time with his father. He taught the disciples how to be alone with the father, Mark 6, 31, because so many people were coming and going, they did not even have a chance to eat. He said to the 12 apostles, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Settle and so, I mean, that's not the only time, you know. That must have happened often, you know, uh, d daily, you know. If, and yeah, <laughs> every day. <laughs> Let's settle in our hearts, no matter what. No matter what, I'm going to get alone with you, Father, every single day. Yes. Matthew 11:28. Come to me, all who, are, who labor and are weary, and I will give you rest. There's no one in this life who's exempt from becoming weary and can, can sustain themselves by themselves. Okay? We live in a fallen world. No one's exempt. And this is for everyone. His presence is where we get relief. Weariness in this life is from the lack of his presence. And heaviness is rooted in self-reliance, relying on yourself. The presence of Jesus frees us from the constant stress that the tick of time puts on our soul. This is rest. His presence frees us from frustration of desire in the soul. This is rest. Our senses are constantly being bombarded by our surroundings. His presence frees us from this influence. This is rest. In him, say in him. In him we are free from striving, and we see that anything is, anything is possible. This is rest. Rest is the ceasing of natural activity. The life of rest is a life that waits to be empowered by Father's words. Obedience is when our life is yielded to the extent that the Father can perform through us the things that has been spoken to us. Ha! <laughs> it's a promise. We must humble ourselves and come to him on a daily basis and find rest in his presence. So I got this book today. It came in the mail, and I just happened to glance at the back, and it went along with this, so I want to read it. It's uh, Humility by Andrew Murray. Humility, humility is perfect quietness of heart. It's to expect nothing, to wonder at nothing that is done to me, to feel nothing done against me. It's to be at rest when nobody praises me and when I'm blamed or despised. It's to have a blessed home in the Lord where I can go in and shut the door and kneel to my Father in secret. And I'm at peace as in a deep sea of calmness when all around and above is trouble. That's good. All right, Hebrews 4, 8. 
Now, if this promise of rest was fulfilled when Joshua brought the people into the land, God wouldn't have spoken later of another rest yet to come. So we conclude that there's still a full and complete rest waiting for believers to experience. As we enter into God's faith rest life, we cease from our own works just as God celebrates his finished works and rest in them. So then we must give our all and be eager to experience this faith rest life so that no one falls short by following the same pattern of doubt and unbelief. Be eager to experience this faith rest life. Amen? The delight in him must be greater than all other delights in this world that this world could produce, even for a single person. So if you had one person, and then just think about everything that's awesome in this world. Let's see if I can explain this. <laughs> but everything that looks like is so good, anything that you can think of, and everything in this world put together and you know, given to one person, his delight is greater. The delight in him, our delight in him, is greater than that. I mean, he's better. He's better than ev anything because it's all temporal. It all fades away. It's all going to be burnt up one day. It doesn't mean anything. Second Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror of glory of God, of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Beholding the glory is the only way to be transformed into his image. So not beholding his glory. Okay, so beholding the glory is the only way to be transformed into his image. So be, not beholding his glory causes us to remain in our own own image. I, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want to remain in my own image. <laughs> the flesh nature is rebellious and needs to be put under daily by being still before him. Dr. Carolyn Leaf is a world-renowned Holy Ghost-filled cognitive neuropathologist or <laughs> something. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Neuro something, brain scientist. As she said that you need Photosynthesis? Oh. <laughs> I thought that's what you said. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah. Neuroscientist. I know what I'm talking about. I, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said that you need at least 16 minutes per day to rest your brain. 16 minutes minimum to rest your brain. And this is, I was listening to like detoxing your mind or something like that, so you can look it up. But that's, that's like getting rid of the, that's part of the process of getting, getting rid of the negative thoughts and, and renewing your mind and filling your thoughts with God-filled thoughts. It's something that has to do with that. But 16 minutes, I mean, 16 minutes a day, we can do that. We can be still before the Lord. So I'm challenging myself and anyone else to be still for 16 minutes a day, every single day, minimum. And it's going to be like more and more and more and more and more because <laughs> the more you spend time with the Lord, the more you crave him because he's so good and you can't get enough of him. And then everything in this life doesn't even compare it doesn't even, it doesn't satisfy, nothing. Just like we were see, singing, it doesn't satisfy. All right, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you, can you put the music on? Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. So maybe you're saved but never experienced this place with the Father. Or maybe it's only been in public. Maybe it's been years, months, weeks, or days since you've been in the secret place and received rest for your soul. Well, it's available to you today. You can come boldly to the throne of grace. Hebrews 4, 6 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Come to him believing that he is a rewarder 
of those who diligently seek him. In this place is where our Heavenly Father can come in and do that deep work. He floods us with his love. He gives us rest, peace, confidence. What do you need? Direction? Vision? He'll give you marching orders, inventions, business ideas. It's only in this place that we can find satisfaction for our souls. And in this place, there's always something new. And that's what life is, producing something new. He's doing something new. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. So I just want to take some time where uh, everybody, we just close our eyes and just be still before the Father and just receive his love. And don't let your mind wander off if it starts thinking about anything, anything, what you ate for dinner. Or just bring it back to how good he is. It's in this place that he can transform you into someone that you won't even recognize. It's his will for you to, to grow and to be with him and just rest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for a hunger right now for everyone that can hear my voice, Lord, a hunger to come and spend time in this place with you, Lord. Just a deep hunger, Lord. That we'd be hungry for your presence above anything else in this life. Because you're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. You're so good, Father. We receive all that you have for us tonight, Lord. We don't hold anything back from you, Lord. If there's anything that is keeping us from hearing you, Lord, then reveal that to us, Father. We want to hear you, Lord. We want to see you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Everything you need is found in this place. He knows what you need before you ask. Don't hold anything back from him. Father, we commit to resting at your feet, Lord. In the chaos of this life, we set it all aside to spend with you. Hallelujah. From this day forth, we refuse to let the distractions of this world that pull on us to keep us away from you. We refuse to fall victim to that anymore, Lord. We, we choose, we get to spend time in your presence, Lord. We say yes, Lord. We say yes. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning, and we expect you to show up every time, Lord, and come and flood and fill us with you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We receive your love right now, Lord. Everything flows from this place. So we receive you, Father. We receive your love. We eat of you, Father. Thank you, Lord. If you've been discouraged, this is the place to go with the Father. He'll flood and fill you with hope. He'll renew you. He'll give you strength. He'll give you peace. He'll give you vision. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Enjoy oneness with the Father. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Don't miss out. Don't miss out. Relinquish it all before the Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this place, Lord, that's available, Lord. <laughs> we trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just focus on him. If your mind starts to wander, just focus on the Lord. His love is everlasting. He wants to flood and fill you with himself. Thank you, Lord, for your endless love. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. In this place with the Father, this is what will sustain you. (laughs) 
It's a safe place to be. It's always available no matter where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Whatever you need, you can ask him, ask him for it. Thank you, Lord. The enemy will come in and try to tell you that your life is always going to be this way or you're always going to have to go through this. That's a lie. The Lord is doing something new, even right now. He's doing something new. He's doing something new in you, even now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let him birth something new inside of you. This is the place that he drops dreams inside of you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you, Lord. strength. He'll strengthen you. Strength will rise as you wait upon him. You wait upon him in this place. The things he's about to do in you, you cannot fathom with your mind, so get ready. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We receive your love, Lord. We receive your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy of our time. You're worthy of our thoughts. You're worthy of all our affection. You're worthy, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord. This is the place we want to be, Lord. We want to be wrapped up in your presence. There's no other place we want to be. We want to live in this place. We want to live a life of rest in you, Lord. We don't want to do anything on our own strength, but we want to just rest in you, Lord. And we trust you, Lord. We trust you with every area of our lives. Everything, Lord. Every area, we trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. There's a place (laughs) of rivers, rivers of living water, receive from the Father, (laughs) receive, don't miss it, receive. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, worthy. Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't forget what he's brought you from. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. He rescued you. He rescued you from the kingdom of darkness and brought you into the kingdom of light. Ha. We're forever his. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We're forever yours, Lord. Thank you that you're our best friend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we can come to you anytime and you're not annoyed with us. That you love us, Lord. Your love is never ending. When we mess up, Lord, you're still there, Lord. And you love us and you forgive us, Lord. And you teach us and you train us. You father us. Lord, we want you to father us on a daily basis, Lord. We need a father every day. We need you to father us, Lord. You're the best father. Father. You're the best, Abba, Father, Daddy. You're the best. Help us, help us to stay in this place, to come to this place amidst everything in this life, Lord. More and more, more and more. As the day, as the day draws near, Lord, as the... <laughs> help us, Father. We know there's not much time left, Lord, so we want to stay in this place, Father, to know what you have for us, Lord. We want to hit the mark, Lord, and we don't want to do it in our own strength. We want to run, Lord. We want to run for you. We want to to go out and do and occupy until you come and do work until you come because it's easy in you, in you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this great exchange. We give you all of our burdens in exchange for joy. (laughs) Hallelujah. A garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. So constant, so faithful. Help us, Lord, to become more like you, Lord. Mold your character into our character. Father, we commit to this place with you, this place of oneness with you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And then we tell the world, we will tell the world, Father, of this place, Lord, because we know that this is what they're looking for, eternal life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Everything you need is found in him. Do you need boldness? He'll give it to you. (laughs) Do you need peace? He'll give it to you. Do you need joy? He'll give it to you. Self-control? He'll give it to you. Vision? He'll give it to you. Do you need an answer to a question and something in your life that you're going through? Ask him. He'll give it to you. He'll give you the answer in this place. He'll tell you what to do. Trust him. Believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He rewards you with wisdom, with, with answers to all our questions, to things that we don't know. He, the Holy Spirit, is the best. <laughs> You're the best. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We say, have your way, Lord. We don't want to leave this place the same. Change whatever you want to change. Put your finger on whatever you want to put your finger on, Lord. Even when it hurts, Lord, we say yes, and we'll change If he's speaking to you about something, just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will go. Yes, Lord. I will do that. Yes, Lord. I'll change that. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> you know, this just, just makes me think of that scripture, be still and know that I'm God. And there's that time you just, in your life, you just, you need to be still. You need to be quiet. You need to shut up. <laughs> and know that he's God. <laughs> Have your heart and your mind and your it focused on Him, and that's where you hear, that's where He leads you, that's where He guides you. As already as we've heard this tonight, and awesome word, Kristen, thank you so much, and um, and just your life will be changed in His presence. That's all there is to it. It'll be changed in His presence as you surrender yourself to Him completely and give yourself over to Him, and. Um, and that's our whole heart, that's our whole focus, is to know God, is to really be aware of God, to acknowledge God. If you don't acknowledge Him, or if you don't sit down and eat, then you're not going to know Him. And that's, that's, that's what this is about, you know, and unfortunately, in, in some ways, in American Christianity, it's just like church has been set up for the busy. They come in, you know, quick service, you know, all the way down, 45-minute service, and boom, in and out, hurry up, get them all out, get the next group in. It's just all this busy, 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 busy. You know, don't keep me here too long. I love my church. It's short, you know, kind of attitude, um, but no real relationship with God. It's more of a I do my service unto Him. Church, coming to church is not doing a service unto God. Don't stop. Don't hurt yourself that way. It's coming to fellowship with God and fellowship with the, with the body. We're aware of the body. Amen. Yeah. We're aware of the Son. We're aware of, of Father, and we're aware of the body, the body of Christ. And, and he's called us as a family to flow as a family, work as a family. But it, that only works as long as we're connected to the head, Jesus Christ. Amen.